so anyway yeah so this is the little tool that you so I end up coming up on the inside of this and I grab it and then I pull it down and latch it around so so easy make all right the other thing I had to do was this this was going to be for the choke on the side and what I had to do this whole little piece was facing in the wrong direction so you couldn't use it you was gonna have to come out the side over here and I didn't want it to come out the side I wanted to come out the bottom that way it's kind of somewhat hidden so I came in I removed this and because it's cut square um, and then peened over all I did was I just grounded down enough the little peen part to to slide this off rotate it 90 degrees and then I just silver soldered it into place so in theory that probably won't go anywhere um, so yeah so so we're pretty much good to go on this now all I've got to do is just mark off where it's going to go so I'll make a little cardboard template and I'll show you how I do that um, I'll mark it off and then I'll go ahead and we'll come out we'll, we'll draw the, the spot where it's supposed to go I'll drill a hole through the cowling and then uh, it won't be cut to, to, to total length yet because I don't know how it's it, this is going to be interesting to put the cowling on with this so that's what I haven't uh, until I put it on the first time it, it might be even more interesting I may have to put a bend into this thing and, and you don't want to but I will try that first uh, as soon as I make the little template uh, before I even drill the hole I'll leave the template down about where the cowling is going to come in and see how it works there will be a little o-ring grommet that uh, will go um, that'll go down to that little o-ring grommet so that way if it's a little bit loose and sloppy you're not hitting the fiberglass uh, on the cowling it just bounce around inside that so we'll be good to go so anyway that's kind of where this day is going um, you know it's I'd like to get more done than what I'm getting done but uh, everything's just gonna kind of slow down here until I get through the weather and uh, as of right now with that uh, my little test piece um, I've had the uh, put a couple different types of uh, masking tape on it and pulled it off and still haven't lifted that color yet so that's good so anyway, as um, soon as I get uh, rolling on this and show you how I make the template uh, and how everything's going to line up and hope that it'll work out, I'll, uh, I'll bring it back in. Alright, let's see how well I could do this. Okay, here's a little template. Normally I would tape these in place, but because I've got a stopping point back here and I can angle it off my front uh, landing gear mount I was able to put in a little teeny line with just a little pencil mark down here on the side of the cow so that way I know it's everything's good to go here was the spot where it's supposed to go I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it it's a little teeny dot right here so this is where that will be coming through so this is this is where it's gonna going to come through so I will go ahead and I'll drill a hole through here and then uh, um, I'll do it off camera I'll drill a hole through here because I'll probably come in and do it differently than I normally would I'll come in with a really small little uh, uh, drill go through and then just use uh, this and after I get the hole drilled I'll probably come in with an eighth inch drill and then I've just got a little reamer and I'll just run the reamer down through there slowly to get to the size I'm looking for um, I do have to go and I think I think they're upstairs in my uh, in my main toolbox upstairs um, is the, uh, uh, the little o-rings the little o-ring grommets so as soon as I get the o-ring grommets uh, so I know which size I need to make the hole I'll go ahead and bring it down get everything drilled through bring it back and uh, show you how everything lines up hopefully very nicely and I've got uh, yeah so that's what I'll do I got a whole bunch of other little things I want to do inside the front uh, today but I want to get this hole drilled get everything set up then I'm gonna flip uh, the fuselage upside down all right we are getting closer guys it's kind of hard to see it's a tight little area it's back on the wheels I've got to uh, I still have to come back here I'm trying to make sure that this thing does not want to roll uh, I still have to get these little pins out so that's going to be 
that's going to be one of the next steps um, and I'm going to try to get this back onto the workbench uh, to work on that now what we got up front I gotta make a little may have to make a little bit of an adjustment here I think I can work it it everything's loose it's not tightened down I may have to make a slight adjustment to this up here which I can work with anyway the good news you can see it I can get to the adjustment screws so of course you can't do it while the engines running but you can get to them um, and this I couldn't find my little uh, grommets so right now it's just sitting here this is in the run position you pull it down and that's got the choke on so once it starts so once you get it so it's popping off and uh, you need to take the choke off you just put it back up and then just go ahead and start spinning the prop again so. all right that part's done I still got to figure out how I want to work with this because I'm still gonna fill up the fuel tank from this spot in the center I've got all the inf so I may have to cut and there's cut like a little bit of a little just a little bit of an arc in the top right here um, plus I gotta I gotta sand it down anyway um, which is just gonna be just to kind of scuff up it feels pretty good there's a couple spots right here I'm probably gonna fill so it's gonna be it's gonna be a sand down uh, go ahead and hit it with some primer sand it again and find out because this is the only area really that you can feel I mean it's got little teeny pinholes but that's expected because it's glass but that everything else feels really good on it with the exception of this little spot right up here so it's right you can kind of see what is like air inside there um, so who knows it's just it's however the mold was made but this is the this is the area that's gonna get the most amount of work on it because the rest of it feels pretty good so another step another step getting closer to getting there I gotta clean that out. It's starting to look dirty in there. Just been sitting around collecting dust. Uh, and I gotta come back in and start painting again. I've gotta get this black paint come in. I need to tape this paint around here. So this all up here on the top is gonna be the same color as this. So this needs to be touched up. I got some spots inside here need to be retouched again. Uh, and that's about it. Cause you can see upside here inside the fuse that there's a little bit of a little bit of dust and I don't know how much of that I can clean off I'm gonna to try to spray it and wipe it down first because I think it's just I think it's just dry dust it's not wet paint so and then we got to start putting stuff back in get the electrics in and we're getting closer getting closer so anyway it's almost enough for the day um, I got I to gotta clean this mess up, that mess right there, um, just so I can get it back inside. So once I, uh, once I get everything back inside, get everything relatively straightened up to get it in here, because it's, it's, it's back to being longer now, um, I still have to put the rudder on. Um, so that uh, rudder won't happen until I get the hinges, uh, the, new, the, the, the proper hinge pins in on the tail. Um, so we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, it's been a long day for me, and not much stuff was done. We had a uh, one of the we got a circulating hot water line uh, to make sure that the other side of the house um, has hot water, and otherwise it's got to go through a concrete slab to get to the other side, and it cools it down. So anyway, uh, one of the fittings busted and ruptured. So uh, when I was down here in the shop, I just kept hearing the sump pump going on and off and when I went over to realize what it was uh, I had a lot of stuff to do today so it is fixed that's the important part all right back to the plane here is what I've gotten done the only thing I got done was I took these little bungees put it and wrapped it I'm gonna I'm gonna run some new quarter inch uh, aluminum rods through, dowels through. Well, it's going to end up kind of becoming a dowel. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap both ends so I can have a small washer on either side. Um, or I'll wind this backwards. But I want to make sure that these can't pop off. So if I put do that and put a small washer on there just to encapsulate, so hold it in, we'll be good to go. Even if I put on either side a little bar that goes straight across, um, which would probably work nice too. Um, that way there's no way that this can jump off of it. Um, what I'm going to have to do 
let me have you look down. What I'm gonna have to do down here, I can't find it. The one piece I'm missing is my is is the mount that I made for the uh, for the fuel tanks, or the fuel tank and the oil tank. So until I find that, I don't know. I mean, I can pretty much come over here and, and draw a line. I'm gonna have to cut this center section down um, just so that I've got the clearance for the bungee cords. Um, I could wrap the bungee cords different so they're all sitting flat across, which is probably what I'm going to do. Um, so instead of having one screw here, one screw out, and one in the middle, it's going to be one, two, three, four, just for the back side of that. So um, until I get, until I can find that piece, it, it's got to be around here somewhere. And I even doubted for a little bit today that I, I didn't make it. And because I never did a video of it showing with the uh, with the fuel tank and everything made uh, one of the pictures that I took um, as I was building shows that holder in there so I know what I know what it looks like I just got to find it um, I've been through the shop without tearing the whole thing completely apart uh, no luck upstairs where I've got all my other parts of the airplane uh, stored um, not up there either so it's it's around here somewhere I don't want to take the time to make another one <laughs> I mean yeah it's probably an hour out of my time and I've already probably spent an hour looking for it but uh, I'm a guy we have to do this so anyway alright I gotta roll I'll bring it back alright I'm done with that and now I'm back this is because I didn't tell you the way I took care of it with the uh, uh, the bungee cords. What it is is these little bungee balls all you gotta do is take a pair of pliers give a little bit of a pinch it comes apart and then I just slid them out and it's already knotted so I literally just slid it out like that and then just wrapped it so um, seeing that these are very cheap um, I'm just gonna get another pack of them and it'll be ready to go so I just have to uh, locate my uh, I really don't have to locate that holder yet. Let me put it that way. Um, for the for the uh, edit. So anyway, with the uh, with going in and lowering down, cutting it out a little bit. I don't need the uh, the fuel tank mount, uh, the mounting plate for it to do that. I just can go across it with just a straight edge, and that way I'll know how high it is and how everything's gonna. And even if in the middle it was a little bit high and it kind of had a little bump over the top of it, that's not that big of a deal. Um, anything I can do to help keep those things from unwinding, uh, that would be uh, that would be better. Um, so anyway, uh, what I will do is I'll probably go ahead and get my little multi-tool and make some cuts and go inside there with a... Uh, um, Uh, I gotta take all that off first anyway. Um, but I'll just go ahead, I'll go on in and uh, multi tool, cut it down maybe an eighth of an inch. Probably an eighth of an inch would be fine. And then uh, cut it down at an angle and then just go ahead and with the, uh, um, with one of the chisels, just go ahead and slice it out and we'll just call it done. So, and then, uh, and then that'll be, that'll be already good to go. But what I'll probably do is come in and file uh, the edge so it's not a sharp edge for the bungee cords to go over it's a little bit rounded corner less chance of any kind of fraying and the other good thing about having the bungee cords unlike the o-rings is that when the o-rings snap they just snap when a bungee cord if it goes it still has the fabric to hold everything together so even though if the bungee if, if the rubber cord in the middle does snap um, it's not going to just completely fall apart. You still have something pretty much holding the landing gear to a certain extent. So anyway, all right, let me uh, let me get back to work and uh, see how much I can get done today. Seeing that I've it's it's almost getting dark out now, so I'll uh, if I get anything uh, taken care of, I will uh, bring it back. Let you know. All right, everyone, welcome back to the shop. It's Thursday morning, the eighth of February. And uh, it's cold outside, snow's on the way. Six to eight inches, I think, come tonight. So, uh, my goals today, it's just my goals. It's probably not gonna happen, but it's my goals. 
Um, I am going to get the uh, the tail taken care of uh, with getting all the new hinge pins in, and then I'm going to go ahead and take off that cowling, start to sand down on that, and try to get some holes to fill. I was able to get some um, automotive filler primer, and it is. And here's the problem: it's rust oleum. I don't really want to use rust oleum, so I've got to do another test piece where I'm going to spray some of that on a piece of, I'll probably just do a piece of wood, um, scrap piece of wood. Uh, I'll spray some of that on the wood and then I'm going to shoot the ACE primer. I'll do a test piece, so I'll see how it works because I don't know if that's going to work good with this. So that's why I got to make another test piece. So that's going to be another, you know, typical painting issue. So uh, I'll shoot the Rust-Oleum on there, let that set up dry. Um, and I'll do a long enough strip um, and then I'll shoot some of this on part of it and then I'll shoot some of this on part of it. Now the stuff to where I shot this on, when that dries, I'll shoot this on. So it's going to be, <coughs> it's going to be another interesting problem. So anyway, um, I just got to go, uh, I just got to go run to the store real quick and uh, get some food and stuff. Um, so I'll be back down here in the shop in about, uh, you know, two hours or so. So, um, Plus it'll give it time for everything to warm up because it's cold down here and I got my heaters right now next door in the uh, big room because I may end up taking the uh, plane into the big room, uh, but I haven't decided yet. But it's it's this room here has heat coming into it, that doesn't. So uh, right now I've just got everything over there warming it up. So I'll, uh, as soon as I get back down here in the shop, I'll get some stuff moved around and uh, let's, get, let's get to work. Welcome back to the shop, everyone. Uh, we got we got once again another uh, another case of the uh, Mother Nature um, rearing her ugly head. Let me get a ruler. I'm bringing my little 18 inch ruler outside just so you can see the the wonders of nature here. We got uh, we got dumped on pretty good uh, for the past couple days. It was just like little storm after storm coming through. Let me show you where we're sitting right now with snow. Okay, this is on top of my on top of this little bench. We're sitting at 12 inches. So it's just been a bunch of uh, just trying to keep things clear. And I really don't want to get the uh, sorry, really don't want to get the lawn equipment outside right now, um, just because of uh, the snow. And I really don't want to have to put it outside and clean it all off. So what I'm going to work on today, uh, the best I can. Uh, I ordered this uh, through that lovely little company called Amazon. You may have never heard of it before. Um, here's what I'm going to use for my pull-pull uh, cable. It's just some Surflon, some 90 pound. So the stuff itself, let me see if I can bring some of it out just so you can get a look at. There we go. There. Okay. It, it is, it's not much thinner than the uh, than the Dubro product I've been using before, and it does have very good flexibility still of it, just like the Dubro. But this is this is 90 pound test, um, so it's going to definitely be stronger than the Dubro product, um, and uh, it cost cost wise, it's 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 100 feet for 20 bucks, uh, where you're paying 10 dollars and some change for about 20 feet of it uh, through Dubro. So. Uh, but with Dubro, you get the hardware too, as well. So that's that's the important thing. I've already got the hardware, so I'm not concerned about the hardware end of it. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just use this. Now I can use this as well because I, I got 100 feet of it here. I'm not going to use that much. This can also be used for my uh, uh, flying wires, the tail, the, the brace wires, on the uh, the my cub. I'm not going. I've got something heavier duty for this. I can use this on my uh, quarter scale cubs. I got two of them and uh, also my big uh, quarter scale biplane. So, uh, so any replacement wires that I need, I can use it for this, so, so it's good as gold. And, uh, and for the few friends I have, you guys know who I am. Uh, if you're local, you need some of this stuff, let me know. So anyway, um, the other thing I'm gonna work on, cause you saw in that little last little clip, this is all primered. So, and it's been sitting for, three days, three and a half days. 
um, since I primed it. And uh, let's see, Thursday, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, eh, so three and a half days. Um, so I'm going to wet sand this down and let this thing just keep sitting and keep gassing off because uh, I've got Wednesday and Thursday off and I plan on painting this thing orange because the, uh, the weather is supposed to change. It's supposed to warm up uh, this week and uh, there's no snow for you know at least the next week or so. So once we get past this nonsense, hopefully we'll be done for the year. So anyway, let me let me get things set up. Um, I got to figure out how easy it's going to be to run the pull pull cable in here. I almost need to have it sitting on its nose with the tail up to, to drop the line through. Once I get the line through, I'll cut it long. Then I could bring it back inside here and get everything set up. It's just a matter of sorry about that. I got I got battery packs that are just dying for my uh, for my light. So anyway. Um, yeah, let me get everything set up, uh, some stuff moved around, and who knows. I, I may just I may just throw the equipment outside and just throw a couple old uh, uh, sheets over the top of it just to protect it. And so that way I got room, so maybe I'll just do that. Um, I'll bring it back in as soon as I get stuff prepped and ready to work. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, I'd have brought you back in a lot sooner, but I've spent the past couple hours. I had to go upstairs and start digging through uh, some of the video footage before prior to editing to see how I ran that cable through. I didn't know if it intertwined, came between the uh, the elevator uh, push-pull system or underneath it. Um, and it took me probably about a half hour to find the right video clip. Um, and it did go underneath it, so so that was, that was fine. All right, let's see if I can show you uh, what I had to battle with. Uh, this is this is there we go. That'll work even better. I had to come underneath all that stuff and with all these uh, The framework on the side being stood off from the from the little side uh, the, the stringers it kept sliding behind it uh, on the side and down there on the bottom so it took me probably I don't know about a half hour just to get those two lines run down pretty decent and then I had to come back in and I had a couple little twists I had to work with where it went underneath or over the top so what I used was just a just a piece of uh, I don't know 60 thousandths with a little hook on it um, I really would have liked to have something set up where I can run it straight down through there but because the tubes are so tight to that cable I couldn't do anything with it so it was just uh, no, and I knew it was going to be tough. I just really didn't think it was going to be that tough. So, what I will do, um, I'll go ahead and uh, pull everything back out. I've got to go through my little box of goodies and figure out which uh, which connectors I used. Um, the ones that go on the servo, luckily enough, are still attached to the servo. So, I'll run those. I'll put those on. And then I'll probably spin the whole plane around and uh, start working from the back because I've got to have the radio system plugged in, radio on, so it's holding that thing, so it's holding that servo solid. And then I'll hopefully not have an issue, but I got to put a piece of tape or something. Uh, I really don't want to put tape on that, you know why, um, to keep the rudder from moving back and forth. So I'm going to have to work with that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's what's coming up next. So if this is going to. It's going to be a little bit longer of a project, of course, than I wanted to. Uh, than I wanted to take, but you know I've got time, so I've got all the rest of my connectors for the rudder. I've got to. I've got to put this back through. Luckily, everything is set up to the right depth on that side, so I'll get all this stuff set up once I get it turned around. So, um, like I said earlier, I'll bring you back from time to time, and uh, as soon as I uh, get the. Uh, everything hooked up and connected. I'll bring it back, show you what I've got, then I'll spin the plane around and then we'll just uh, start all over again. <laughs> 